Well, I was just on here to share some thoughts. Um, this time I wanted to share some thoughts on, like, disagreeing. <laughs> um, not really sure how to, I guess, start this, but it's just... Uh, I guess growing up in the environment I grew up in, it's put me in a place of mind where, you know, I can see where there can be moments of peace made. Um, just to agree to disagree. You know, plenty of moments where peace can be made if people just agreed it's okay to disagree. <laughs> The environment I grew up in, it wasn't okay. If there was a disagreement, I mean, it had to be yelled at, screamed about, and for hours. <laughs> um, you know, I wish I was kidding there, but I am not exaggerating at all when I say that it was it would go on for hours. My mom, I remember when her and my dad would get up with set with each other, and to this day, my mom could go on until the sun goes down, and she'll carry on even longer than that. She will carry on for days. Um, because she's angry, because she disagrees. And I'm not saying that it, she doesn't have a right to be mad sometimes. Sometimes she really does. Sometimes. <laughs> Emphasis on sometimes, as in not all the time. Sometimes it just seems she's mad. <laughs> and it really has nothing to do with anybody. She's just mad. My dad, I can't say he's a screamer or a yeller, but he is, as I said, more subtle about things. And will try to uh, treat you and act like you're an idiot. And will chuckle at you and laugh at you in such a casual way that to people around you, they might think he was just chuckling at something you said. He does it in a manner that people around have... No idea he's really belittling you, mocking you, and demeaning you. Um, and laughing at what an idiot he thinks you are. Uh, you know, for examples on how my parents can react uh, to disagreements. My mom, I was voting, I voted for somebody else this year. And the election of 2017. Uh, I voted for someone else than her this time. And every, I mean, it was so much. She would just be angry with me and kept going on and on about how I shouldn't vote for a certain candidate. A candidate, mind you, I had already made clear I wasn't voting for. Yet she was obsessed as to why I should not vote for a certain candidate. Rather than focus on the fact that I wasn't voting for them. <laughs> um, you know, to be honest, she was obsessed that I did not vote for Hillary Clinton. Uh, she was voting for Donald Trump. I had already made clear I was not voting for Hillary Clinton. Neither did I vote for Donald Trump. But respectfully, he is our president now, so, you know, I am respectful of that. <laughs> um, so, no, I, I, I don't get angry or upset and feel like, well, the person I voted for didn't win. I, I knew the likelihood is they, they wouldn't win. 
Um, but I, I wanted to voice what I felt in my heart. I wanted to follow my heart. I did not want to. And I wanted to follow who I thought would be the better candidate. Not the perfect candidate, as to be honest, I do not feel any candidate is ever perfect because they are human, so nobody's perfect. Uh, I think, you know, when we vote, we think we're just voting for the, the better candidate, the one that would do best. Um, so I, I'm not going to say that I think my candidate was perfect. I don't think he was at all. <laughs> I just felt more comfortable voting for him. Um, but my mom was very focused on not who I was voting for, but who I shouldn't vote for. She was very angry about anybody who did vote for Hillary Clinton. She very much so disagreed with it and, you know, disagreed with it to the point that she's yelling and screaming at me with all her aggression and anger about who that she feels towards those that were voting, but she can't scream at them. <laughs> they might call the cops, you know? So I got the lash out and the, the, for it all. Even though I, I wasn't voting for Hillary Clinton. <laughs> uh, but this is just an example how she handles her disagreements. Um, my dad, on the other hand, uh, as I said, is more subtle. He was not supportive of who I was voting for. But he was not... Pretty much because I was not voting for who he was voting for, he was just not supportive, period. Um, you know, it had to be who he was voting for or he would simply think I was an idiot. But instead of verbalizing this, he does things very subtly. I still remember him looking at me and saying, Oh, it's okay if you want to vote for the wrong person. And then chuckling at me like I'm a complete idiot. And his small way to very much demean me and belittle me and my intelligence of making a choice on my own rather than just obey him and following exactly step for step as he wanted me to do. And their disagreement does not stop. Uh, their actions and how they react when they disagree does not stop just there. Uh, this is how they react to each other. Um, I can't say they do it completely the same in public. Uh, to be honest, I think they're more careful in public because I think they only go further uh, to be more well of an asshole to family because they kind of feel we're family. And I think they think they can get away with whatever they want because they think we're never going to say or do anything about it. So I think they take very much highly advantage of the fact that we're family. Um... And they set no consequences for themselves, so they act, react in a way of somebody with no consequences. So when they're in public and they disagree with somebody, um, to be honest, uh, my mom will also get very loud and she will get very insulting to a person. And that is if she's very passionate about whatever it is that she believes in or what opinion she believes in. Opinions that she holds. Hmm. You know, and, uh, my dad, on the other hand, uh, I'm not really sure fully how he reacts to people, because... I think he really just acts the same, though. I haven't hardly get to see him react to somebody he has a disagreement with. Um, but really, I think he, you know, what few times I have seen, he just acts the same. He will be very demeaning to that person and uh, chuckle at them. Very just um, <laughs> in a very manner like you're an idiot kind of manner <laughs> 
Um, so yeah, th this is how my family reacts when they have a disagreement. Um, uh, my baby sister, all the same, she can be very much so mouthy. I can't say she's a screamer, though. I would say, though, when something's not going her way, she's very demanding that it goes her way. <laughs> And I can tell you right away that usually does not go in her favor. Um, I, you know, I remember when we were still going to church and, you know, there was, uh, you know, a couple of boys that were friends with my brother and they would refer to my brother by a different name because he reminded them of this person. So they would refer to him by another name, you know, like a nickname. And this really pissed my baby sister off. She would get very mad at these boys, which, of course, enticed them all the more to call my brother by this name. Uh, so that's how my baby sister reacts when something is not going her way or she disagrees with it. Uh, she was angry about that because my mom would be very angry when others called us by other names. I'm not really sure why she would get angry about it. She would just say that that wasn't the name she gave us, that... They had to call us by our name that she had given us at birth. Um, so, and my sister was very adamant about making sure that it went mom's way to stand up for that, too. Um, to be honest, I, I might have said it a few times that my mom would prefer me to be called by name or my brother by name. Uh, but, you know when you get older, you, you start to mature and grow and realize the world works much differently and thinks much differently. And it's not a bad way of thinking. I would say by my, uh, I would at least suppose around my uh, late teens, early twenties, I, I was definitely not in a hissy. If someone called me by a different name or gave me a nickname, <laughs> uh, you know, by then I had learned that nicknames are a part of life. It's a cute little way of having, uh, you know, connecting with your friend. <laughs> you know, I, I in particularly also like to give my friends nicknames. I definitely have given my boyfriend lots of nicknames. <laughs> um, so, you know, I, I, I'm part of the, the whole nickname clan now, but... <laughs> Uh, my sister, still at that time, was still very fussy about that. Uh, my mom eventually lightened up and stopped being angry with people about that. And my sister then, therefore, did the same. My baby sister did the same. Uh, but, you know, at that time, that's that's how, you know, that's what happened. And, uh, you know, her reactions are still the same. And sometimes she does it in a very... A uh, sneaky way, like she'll make a remark about you and act like she's completely oblivious as to, you know, why she made that remark. Like my brother was working with a guy once that he absolutely hated, and my baby sister found out he was wearing Axe deodorant, and we all hate that deodorant. I mean, for God's sakes, it smells bad. And my brother was, you know, he was one of them that wore it too, and I hated it because he would just pour it on. But, uh, you know, to get at the guy for being such a, somebody my brother didn't like, my sister walked past him, she goes, oh god, that stinks, it smells like an axe. Uh, you know, this, this is how they react to people they disagree with. I honestly didn't do that because, I don't know, it just sounds t too much acting just to hurt somebody and I really didn't feel like doing that <laughs> I may not like the guy and I definitely didn't like his deodorant um <laughs> but I did not feel the necessity to do something to hurt him I mean if the if there was an occasion brought up where he was wronging my brother and I was there in person uh, of course I would have stood up for my brother but uh just you know to be mean just to be mean that was just it's not in me to this day to do that um
So now you know how my family reacts when they, uh, they disagree. I've also noticed, though, in other people, they seem to share similarities in this bad habit. Maybe not to the severity of my family, where they can be yelling and demeaning, um, but in some people, they, they do share it to the uh, severity, but some I've noticed they don't, but they do share some of the same characteristics. And that is, if you disagree, it turns into an argument, it turns into a fight, It turns into an egotistic issue of I have to be right and you have to be wrong and I have to prove that to you. Um, and I don't think, and in my honest opinion, I don't think that's very healthy to handle disagreements that way. Uh, and when I say disagreements, I, I mean something as simple as, you know, you know, political, like who you're voting for or... Uh, you know, what religion or belief you have. And for those that claim they don't have a belief, then, you know, it's your belief that you don't believe. Um, you know, <laughs> it's just, uh, you know, just a disagreement. Uh, and I, I never understood why people feel the need to literally fight and argue and disturb not only this other person's peace, but your own peace. Just to satisfy an ego to say you're right and the other person's wrong. Um, I understand, though, in a, you know, if, if it's not just a disagreement, but, you know, clearly... Uh, a lack of morals, such as when, you know, my dad was beating our asses or, um, and absolutely just has no sympathy or, or guilt or remorse for what he was doing. Uh, I understand that to be wrong, and I don't consider that just to be a disagreement then. That is just a knowing of what is right and wrong. And standing up for that. Or when someone is molesting someone or has raped or has murdered. this is That's not a, a disagreement. That is a knowing between right and wrong. And it's okay, I think. To, and I believe it's okay to, yes, get up in that person's face or do what you have to to help them know that that's wrong because they clearly have a lack of knowing and feeling any empathy or sympathy or connecting period to another person uh, to fill with them that they could cause such pain and uh, they feel nothing. And that, that's really sad. But that is a fact of life is something that exists, but that, that is not what I'm talking about when I'm talking about disagreements. Um, when I talk about disagreements, I'm not talking about something between right and wrong. That uh, for the majority, I think the most of us can figure out what what right and wrong is. <laughs> uh, but uh, I'm talking about just simple disagreements, such as you know political disagreements. Um religious disagreements or just simple uh, disagreements and opinions. Um, like, you know, when people disagree politically, I, I wish they wouldn't get so aggressive or angry as it seems many, many people do. Uh, to be honest, I do not get angry when people disagree with me politically. Um, I'm completely fine with it. <laughs> um, in my opinion, um, you know, I'm just, I'm just now in the early stages of trying to learn more, uh, politically than I had before. <laughs> uh, 
before I was really just doing all I was told to do. I, I did not think for myself. And, you know, I'm, I'm just in the early stages still of trying to understand things. Uh, but by doing so, I have learned quite a bit. I've learned that it seems that at least the political parties I've, you know, um, read up on to see what they're about and what they support. And it, you know, I came to find that I didn't find any of them were evil. I came to find that I felt that they each had something very, very good to offer, but each also had their flaws. Um, and I think that if they would all work together, uh, each would be able to counter the other's flaws with what they had good to offer. And each could be able to correct their own flaws if they just accepted the other political parties and what they had to offer. Um, and that that's for all the political parties. I noticed they all had good things to offer, but I also noticed they had some flaws. Um, like um, the Democrats... And I, I'm going by, you know, people that I know. I'm not just going by something I read in an article. Um, I'm, you know, learning how they feel by uh, people that I actually do know personally and am related to. <laughs> I, um, you know, like the Democrats, I, you know, those that I know personally, I've come to learn that they just want to be able to have a system where the government is better balanced and um, better structured and that there be, you know, uh, better organizations for people in need. Um, and some of them, yeah, they believe in free health care and some of them believe in, uh, you know, helping those with disabilities and those that are elderly and I don't think that's a bad thing. I don't think that's a bad thing at all. That is trying to help your community and trying to help better your country. I don't think there's anything wrong with that at all. And my whole life when I grew up, I was being told that the <laughs> uh, Democrats just wanted to have a bigger government and give the government all control. I, I was not told into taught that they just wanted, you know, a better world and environment for their, their people. I, I was not taught that at all. Uh, so yes, I, I do look at them. It, that, that is very fear-based. Afraid for better organization and better, um, you know, health care for those in need because they're afraid of the government getting bigger and having more control. Um, so it keeps uh, something good from happening because of fear. Uh, that's not to say that I'm, I'm saying it's just the Republicans that have fear. I don't think it's just them either. <laughs> I, I think that, you know, each party has their own fear and I think each of them seem to uh, fear something about the other political parties. It's keeping good things from happening. And that's why I say I think that if they all work together, uh, we would be better balanced. And they would each have something good to bring to the table and each would be able to balance out the other's flaws. Being that said that, uh, you know, that Republicans fear that Democrats are just trying to take control give the government all control and we'll lose all our freedoms. <laughs> um, you know, I, I noticed that the Democrats also seem to have something against Republicans. <laughs> uh, but I, I don't think I need to go into explaining that. I think anybody that votes knows there's something, you know, quarrels between the Democrats and the Republicans. <laughs> uh, I personally do not have any quarrels. I, you know, I see good in all of them. So, um, yeah, I don't disagree. I, I don't want to argue or fight or, you know, about a pol uh, 
political views. I feel each has something good to offer. Um, you know, the Republicans, they, what, you know, I was taught growing up was that they just want to be able to have the money that they've earned and to be able to run their own business if they want to and earn the money from that business and keep it if they want to. I also think that's not a bad thing. You, you worked hard for that money. You worked hard for that business. You should be allowed to keep it. It's pretty simple. <laughs> um, and, uh, yeah, some of the political parties I've noticed seem like they just want to be uh, peaceful. And some seem to just want to follow the Constitution uh, I can't remember where all these political parties are because, as I said, I'm just beginning into, you know, trying to study more on it. So it's, uh, yeah, like before I decided to study, I didn't even know there was more than two political parties. I had no idea about conservatives. I had no idea about libertarians. I, I had no idea about any of these. Um, I think one was called the Constitutionist. Uh, yeah, there, there was a lot. Um, the, the one I've noticed everybody seems to be creeped out by, and maybe they have every right to, and that, that, that's socialism. <laughs> uh, probably, uh, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, point is I'm learning there's more political views than just... Democrat and Republican, and I'm learning that a lot of them each have something good to offer. So, for me, I personally don't get mad about different political views. I feel you have a right to your view, but I also have a right, feel I have a right to my view. Uh, so, if there's a disagreement there, I'm like, cool, we disagree. That's awesome. That means you have something good to bring to the table that I might not have. <laughs> And I have something good to bring to the table that you probably don't <laughs> have. So each of us are able to do something great. And each of us are able to balance out what the other is missing or the other's flaws. So, you know, I, I like the fact that we disagree because it means there will be more growth. Uh, and there will be more, you know building into our country than what there would have been if it was just all Republican or all Democrat or all Libertarian. I think if it was all one party, it would really, really, really suck. Um, you know, each party has done something to bring something good to this country. So, you know, I'm for all the parties. Um, <laughs> for maybe a few, because they, they don't seem to really be doing anything helpful. <laughs> uh, no offense. Um, but for the most part, it seems like each are doing something helpful. Um, and, uh, you know, so it's okay if you disagree with me. I, I'm absolutely cool with you disagreeing with me. <laughs> uh, and, you know, this... This is why, I mean, like, I wish people would react the same. Uh, because I, I don't think the arguing and the fighting and the egos are going to help keep this country together. And I don't think it's going to help it grow or build. I think that's a lot of the problem of what's helping tear us down. And I think that's what's, you know, making us go backwards rather than forwards. <laughs> uh, which is why I really wanted to talk about, you know, disagreements and, you know, how people handle them and, you know, how it can be handled in a manner that might be more peaceful and a manner that's not going to change your mind because that's not my goal is to change people's views or their opinions or beliefs. I, I would love it if you kept doing that. I'd love it if you kept having your opinions and your beliefs, even if it's to disagree with me. You know, I love that you disagree. I really genuinely do. Um, but I, I do wish people would be more peaceful and accept that each has something good to offer in that disagreement. Even if it's a, a disagreement on religion, I personally, you know, also am not angry if you, you have a different religion. I personally don't have a religion 
I rather follow the path of spirituality without the, you know, need to follow a certain base of rules and laws <laughs> that sometimes they're not necessary. I, you know, I'll follow what resonates with my heart and what I feel makes me help me be a better person or you know, helps me feel better connected to God or the universe. I am will follow it makes, you know, me feel connected to uh my soul and spirit. But uh I, I don't feel the need to follow all the other rules and laws that don't resonate to me, don't make me feel connected to God or universe or spirit or anything. And I think they're just rules and laws someone made up. <laughs> um, but, you know, I'm perfectly fine with others having different religions. Um, you know, equally, again, I think each has something good to offer. Uh you know, I I know that there's been a very big difficulty, uh, yes, with around accepting the uh, the Muslim religion, and I'm not angry at people for having difficulty with that. I you know I was 14 when 9/11 occurred, and I still remember that. And yes, I know that those that um took down the, the Twin Towers were Muslim. I understand that completely. So I understand where people's fear is coming from. And I, you know, I don't blame them. I understand when something happens, it scars a person and it hurts them. And it leaves them with triggers. Uh, you know, such as when I grew up <laughs> with my dad. I, you know, I didn't have a big trust towards men with my heart. And I, you know, I didn't really get in a relationship. Uh, you could say that was a trigger to not trust them. And I had to get past that. It doesn't mean that what my dad did wasn't wrong. It doesn't mean that he's not a man. Of course he's a man, and I must acknowledge that. And that he was also very much an asshole, and is to this day. Um you know, a cruel person. But it doesn't mean that all men are bad. There are some men out there that are just like my dad, too, and they're just cruel and manipulative and abusive. But not all of them are that way. Uh, so that's the way I look at this, as I see that, you know, people have been hurt, they've been scarred, and now the word Muslim, is a, it's a trigger. It's a, a trigger of fear. It's a trigger and a reminder of what happened. And it's true. There's a lot of Muslims out there that are not good. I mean, they're, they're, there's been terroristic attacks. There's been terroristic threats. And, uh, you know, can't hide that and can't deny it. I think that would absolutely be uh, wrong. And forgive me for saying so, but completely stupid. <laughs> Uh, but I also recognize that not all Muslims are bad. You know, there are some Muslims that actually do uh, form organizations to help people. Uh, you know, help those in need and care about them, much like, I guess you could say, a Christian church will do. Like, they'll serve the homeless around Thanksgiving or... Uh, you know, or things I have helped out with when I was still Christian in church, and that was to uh, help provide um, gifts and a good time for children that weren't going to be able to have a Christmas. Uh, so, uh, you know, the point is there, there's, there's some good Muslims out there, and they, they do good things. They have something to offer. Uh by helping out their community and doing good and trying to help it be a better place. Um, you know, and all that being said, I know it's going to be difficult for some to accept that. Uh, and that's okay. You need to work with your, on your fears and, and get through them on your own. Um, and I understand pushing you through it is not going to help. 
Uh, though I do hope you eventually do get through it. I, I know how it feels, and I know it's a scary, hard place to be. Uh, so much peace to you, and, and absolutely no judgment toward you. Um, you know, and as for those that are Muslim, I, I know it may be difficult, but uh, my best suggestion is just acknowledge that those that attacked were terrorists. And, it, you know, acknowledge that they were Muslim. It doesn't mean that acknowledging them means that you feel you're like that or that you're accepting you're like that. Um, it does not mean that, but I do think it would help a great deal with people's fear for you to acknowledge that. Um, it's, uh, it's, I, you know, I think it would just help a great deal because then they know that you know, and they know that you know it was wrong then, what those people did. Uh, and those that are in fear, I think that's mostly all they're really looking for. And so if you can acknowledge that those people were Muslims, but they were bad Muslims, um, I think it would help people out a great deal that are in fear. Uh, and this is not me saying that I think that you are terroristic. I don't think you are at all. I, you know, I've met Muslims and, uh, you know, I've talked with a few and some be seem very friendly and some don't seem all that friendly either. <laughs> Uh, but I think that's just a human thing. Some people are friendly and some are not. So when I say they're not friendly, I don't mean that it means they're terrorists. I just mean that, you know, there's some people that are friendly and some that are not. Um, those are just my personal experience. And no, we never, when I talk with them, uh, it was never around like, are you a terrorist kind of conversation. It was just like, hey man, how are you? <laughs> Doing good, cool. <laughs> you know, just a normal, casual conversation. And, um, you know, sometimes if I see a Muslim woman, you know, I, I don't know what it's called, so forgive me, but the thing you, you wear on your head if you're a woman, you know, occasionally I compliment them, I'm like, that thing's pretty. <laughs> I don't really know what it is, I just know it looks pretty sometimes. Some of them are wearing ones with little flowers on it or uh, decorative features that are, well, they're pretty, so, you know. <laughs> And then, you know, some of them, I, I wave at everybody and I say hi to everybody, uh, you know, because you don't know who's having a bad day and some will scowl at me. But I don't think that's because they're Muslim. I think that's just because they're grumpy. <laughs> you know, I wave to a lot of people and it really doesn't matter what religion they are. Some people will smile back at me and some will be grumpy. And uh, yeah, so it has nothing to do with religion. And I know that it just has to do with some people are grumpy. Uh, but, sorry, I'm ADHD and I'm getting off track. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, I think if it was just acknowledged that the people who, um, were terrorists, you know, if it was just acknowledged that, yes, they, they are Muslim, but they're bad Muslims, you know, accept the truth they're Muslim, but at the same time, you can accept there's a difference between you and them, uh, that you guys are not the same. I think that would help people in fear a great deal. Um, to be able to find the same acceptance. If you show that acceptance as well. Because um, if you can accept they're Muslim. But you make it very clear you're not the same. Then they'll be able to see that you're accepting it. And it'll help them to accept that knowledge equally the same. That y'all aren't the same. <laughs> uh, you know. It's not that other people in other religions wouldn't understand or comprehend accepting that somebody of your own belief was an asshole. <laughs> um, you know, I, you know, I grew up Christian and I, I can't say that some Christians weren't absolutely just horrible people. Uh, you know, I, there was actually... A time told about where uh, a Christian man had actually gone and bombed an abortion clinic. Uh, and I remember how, you know, sad it had made, you know, when stuff like that happens, I know how sad and how much it breaks the heart of the, the Christian community. Um, because then they fear that people will start to see that and think that that's how they are when they're really not. 
and they start being afraid of other people thinking that each of them have a bomb strapped to their chest ready to go bomb an abortion clinic or a, a pagan <laughs> gathering or anything a Christian might disagree with. Uh, so, you know, I, I would say every religion has a moment where somebody does something really bad in the name of your beliefs. And it's hard to deal with. It really is. Because you want the rest of the world to know that that's not how you're, you are. Um, but, you know, in the Christian community, they had to acknowledge that the person who had done that very evil act was indeed a Christian. But it didn't mean that they let that moment define them. Instead, they just kept helping and, and giving and being kind and loving to people. And uh, I can't say that always helps. There's always going to be somebody who didn't like Christians and felt they were just all judgmental and all <laughs> extreme, you know, and I know some Christians can be judgmental, which is why I don't go to church anymore, but I also still have a lot of Christian friends that I know are good people, so I don't judge them, but I know some people can't get past that, and they just thought all oh, Christians were judgmental, and they won't have nothing to do with them, so I, you know, I understand when you have a religion or a belief, um, some people are going to take that faith and they're going to do something really, really just evil with it. And it's heartbreaking and it's hard to deal with because now, now you're in a state of mind where you want others to know that's not you. And, and sometimes you go about the route like some Christians did when I was in church where they would say, well, that wasn't a real Christian. That, that, that was just somebody evil. That wasn't a real Christian. And it never stopped the fact that that person claimed to be Christian. It never stopped the fact that that's where they based their reasoning to go do something so evil. Um, you know, I thought it was best to just acknowledge that person claimed to be a Christian. I thought it was best to just acknowledge that person did something evil with that belief. It didn't make all Christians that way. We just had to, I guess you could say, fight back um, pain and anger and judgment with love. Just be loving. And not let that person have the bigger power. Um, you know, they're dead anymore. anyway. They don't have any power anymore. You're alive, so take that moment to just be loving and have greater power in that. Um, you know, so I feel it's the same way when, you know, I see some Muslims, they, they <laughs> go the same route some Christians have, and that's that wasn't a real Muslim. That, that person's not a real Muslim. It's like, I, I don't think that not acknowledging it is going to help. I don't think trying to ignore it is going to help. I think the best way to, you know be able to um, get through it and find healing is to just acknowledge it. I know it's going to hurt acknowledging it. It's going to be hard because that person took your faith, something you find very beautiful and very kind and loving, and did something so destructive and evil with it that it just breaks your heart. You know, so I, I know that that hurts and I know it sucks. <laughs> you know, but I think the best way if you're going to get through this and help others get through it with you is just acknowledge it, be loving, be kind, keep practicing what you feel is good in your faith. And I believe people eventually will get through it with you. And if they don't forgive them, they're still in a lot of pain. They'll have to get through it on their own. But by acknowledging it and just being loving and kind, you're going to help yourself get through whatever pain you're going through. Um, you know, so uh, please don't think I'm judging you by saying that those, those terrorists were Muslims. Uh, I'm not. I just think it's best to acknowledge it. It's a lot like when I was in Christianity and having to acknowledge that somebody that bombed an abortion clinic was Christian. 
it's very difficult to understand why someone would take a beautiful faith and do something evil with it. You know, so uh, I, I get it's hard what you're going through. Um, but yeah, I think just acknowledging it and continuing on in what you feel is loving in your faith, I think that'll be a big part of helping you heal. And anybody with an open heart or mind or ready for healing, I think it would be a big part of helping them let go of their fear and heal. Anybody not ready for it, though, just, just forgive them. Uh, they're not ready for it. Uh, it doesn't make them a bad person. It just means them they're not ready. And it may take a little more time before they can, you know, figure their way out through. Uh, so, you know, that all being said, I got that out of the way. Um, you know. Uh, you know, as I said, I do not think, as I said, anybody with a different belief or faith or religion... It, you know, it doesn't bother me. I feel they have something good to offer. As I said, the Muslims, they, you know, some of them have organizations where they, they help their community. They do something good. Uh, you know, how can I hate that then? How can I be like, well, you have a bad religion? <laughs> uh, especially if they're showing evidence that they're, they're, they don't have a bad religion. They ha they're good people. Uh, you know, and... You know, I grew up in Christianity, so I can definitely say a lot that there, you know, there's a lot of people in there that do good for their community. Helping the homeless be fed, helping children get gifts for Christmas. Um, you know, and uh, I guess I could say each religion has something good to offer them. Uh, you know, I don't practice, you know, being a, I, I don't, uh, practice the religion Muslim or Christian anymore, but it's not that I don't see that they don't have something good to offer. I mean, I do think prayer is a good thing. It shows a, a source of discipline and a, a source of being able to be, uh, grateful for every day. Um, also shows a source to give thanks for, you know, that you're alive today and breathing. You know, sometimes your day might not be good, but you're still alive and breathing, so that that's pretty good. You know, you're alive and breathing. Tomorrow might be a better day. So, you know, each religion belief, I would say, you know, they have prayer in there, and they have acts of kindness in there. So they have something good to offer. And so it's kind of like how I feel about political views. Each one has something good to offer, so I can't really be angry and be like, oh, how dare you for, you know, having a different belief or religion than me. <laughs> um, you know, I feel that they each have something good to offer. I mean, Buddhism, they teach you to not need things that you really don't need, <laughs> like uh, materialistic things, you know, so that's also self-discipline and learning to be grateful for, you know, life. Um, you know, so I, you know, I enjoy some views of Buddha Buddhism. I, I can't say I would practice it fully as here I am on a laptop recording this. <laughs> Something very materialistic. <laughs> and I would like not to give up because I like it, but, you know, uh, it doesn't mean I don't have self-discipline or anything, but, <laughs> uh, you know, I just choose to keep some certain things in my life that I like. <laughs> but, uh, you know, as I was saying, Buddhism, it, it gives discipline, it gives prayer, it gives thankfulness and gratefulness for what you have. Uh, and I would say pretty much every religion seems to offer the same thing. It gives you a source of discipline, it gives you a source to be able to be grateful for something. And be grateful for every day. Um, does that mean I agree with every little detail in each religion? No. If I did, I would still be Christian. But I did not agree with every detail there. So I'm, you know, I'm on my own personal path now. But I understand each belief has something good to offer. Um, you know, and as some might believe, a, a lack of belief. 
uh, like atheists. Yes, I, you know, I believe atheists also have something good to offer. I mean, in the sense, they were kind of the ones that ended the witch trials. <laughs> I mean, if it wasn't for them, we would still be having, uh, you know, people afraid of people that were absolutely harmless and, you know, uh, murdering innocent people that weren't witches just because people were scared. Um, yes, I've studied on this a little bit. I'm not saying it was atheists that, you know, helped in the witch trials, but, you know, it was a time when people were starting to believe in more science and they were starting to not uh, follow a god or a deity or religion so much. So because of that, the witch trials ended uh, because people thought it was nonsense to murder people that were completely harmless. Maybe they thought they were idiots for... Um, following or praying to whatever they were believing in or believing they could cast spells, but <laughs> they, you know, believed they were just harmless idiots that didn't deserve being killed. <laughs> so, or they were just harmless people be, uh, being accused of something they weren't actually doing. Uh, so, the thing is, they didn't believe in magic. They didn't believe in, you know, God or nothing. Uh, so, because of that, you know, the witch trials ended. So each belief, I would say, has something good to offer and has done good in helping th this community and helping it grow and helping it be a better place. And I know that may be so difficult for some different religions to be able to um, accept that. Uh, but it, but it is the truth, and, you know, when I say each one has something good to offer, no, I'm not saying that each religion is perfect. Uh, you know, I said I grew up in Christianity. I can say there's a lot of judgmental people in there then. Uh, but nonetheless, as I said, you know, I greet people, and I'm always being kind. Uh, so I can tell you I've probably been scowled at about, <laughs> from every religion. <laughs> So it really doesn't matter if you're Christian, Jewish, <laughs> uh, Catholic, um, or, or Muslim, or pagan. I'm pretty sure I've been scowled at by every religion, but I'm pretty sure I've also been smiled at by every religion, too. So, um, you know, like every, I'm pretty sure I've been scowled at by yeah, you get it. <laughs> so, you know, uh, I, I get it. It does. I don't think any religion's perfect, just like I don't think any political view is perfect. But each has got something good to offer. And, you know, if we all just accept that we've each got something good to offer and stop judging and stop being so concerned with trying to convert, uh, you know, I think we could better work together than it you know, helping our community. Um, yeah, that is just my personal opinion and belief, though, so I'm not going to try to enforce my opinions or beliefs and be like, you have to believe me and you have to agree, because uh, that's partly what I'm sharing here on these thoughts here, is that um, it's okay to disagree, and it's okay to for you to feel you're right and the other person's wrong. It is okay equally if the other person is wrong and that you're right and being at peace with that. You don't have to prove it to them, you know. Um, so, you know, I feel like that. I feel like if I'm right, I don't have to prove you wrong. I, I'm completely at peace with it. And if I'm wrong and you're right, I'm also at peace with it because nobody's right all the time. So <laughs> might as well be at peace with it. Uh, you know, instead of trying to prove you're right all the time and that someone's wrong all the time, just be at peace with it. Because you don't have to prove that they're wrong. If they're wrong, maybe it's the one time they're wrong and they're perfectly okay to be wrong 1%. And if you're, you're wrong, maybe you're right all the time, but you're wrong about this one thing. It is also equally okay to be wrong with this 1%. And, and probably not even know it because we all think we're right, don't we? So... I'm just at peace with it, though. Um, and that's mostly what I really want to share on here and hope others could, you know, learn from. It's okay to disagree. And it's okay to be at peace in that disagreement. 
Um, you know, and it's just, I feel the same when it comes to just playing different opinions rather than, you know, religion or politics. Uh, you know, just playing dis different opinions. I'm pretty cool. Uh, you know, for the most part, well, maybe not the most part, but, uh, you know, like me and my boyfriend, we don't actually agree on everything. I mean, for one, we grew up in a very different environments. I mean, I grew up Christian, and he, he grew up uh, believing in evolution. I mean, <laughs> can you really get any more different? <laughs> but, you know, he and I don't argue about that. Um, you know, he let me pray before I eat my food and before I go to bed and you know when I wake up in the morning and I don't look at him like why yo, why aren't you praying <laughs> um you know it's it's his belief and in my belief you know when we're different we just respect the other and uh, we just choose that we love each other. We see that each is a very good person, a very good loving person. Each is very loving to each other. You know, I'm very loving to him. He's very loving to me. And, you know, that's what matters. Uh, we don't have to agree. I mean, uh, we're already trying to plan, you know, what we would do for a wedding. And already, you know... Uh, you know, I'm gluten intolerant, and I would like to have all gluten-free food there because I, I really hate not knowing what I can eat and what I can't eat. And then when I'm eating something, I'm literally just risking, like, okay, maybe this is going to make my head go all groggy and make me sick. I don't know. Um, and I hate risking like that. I really do. And he, on the other hand, is not gluten intolerant. He wants his gluten, but... You know, we had a talk, and he doesn't completely agree with me wanting the menu all gluten, but he's respecting that I would like that. <laughs> uh, you know, pretty much saying that if it really is for my well-being, then he'll just agree to let it happen. Not that he wants to let it happen, but he'll agree to that, you know, and, you know, vice versa. There's a lot of things that I'll agree to him with, even if I really don't want to, but I will. Because it's not worth the argument. It's not worth having to be right and proving him wrong. And it's not worth it to him to have to make all the food gluten. When, you know, what? what's the payoff in that? He's still going to get good, yummy food. <laughs> and, you know, what's the payoff for me to be like, well, I want the whole wedding to be a fairy enchantment rather than aliens from space. He wants aliens from space. You know, I think he might look a little weird, but, you know, I love him. And it's fun. You know, so what's the point in having to say, I want it all my way? Uh, you know, and I, I don't want it all my way. <laughs> you know, I've already sh um, made known that I, I like that people disagree with me because I think they have something good to offer. You know, so eagerly with my, my boyfriend, I... Uh, you know, I'm perfectly fine. He disagrees. And, you know, a lot of moments I actually like he disagrees because it gives me a different point of view. It gives me a different angle to look at things um, that I otherwise, otherwise wouldn't have looked at it. So, you know, I very much enjoy he disagrees with me. Um, you know, and I enjoy the fact that even if he disagrees with me, he can be at peace he disagrees. Uh, you know, and I think that has a lot to do with what helps keep us together and in love. It doesn't have to do with do we agree with each other or do we talk exactly the same or, you know. <laughs> uh, you know, did we grow up the same in the same belief or religion or lack thereof? It just has to do with loving each other and accepting each other. Um, you know, and... I, this is how I was before I even met him, so, uh, you know, I didn't change into a person like this after meeting him, um, you know, I've always been that way, and I think that's a lot of why, you know, it helps us stay connected, because, 
Uh, it's just who we are. We don't feel a need to prove people wrong. And, you know, that was very difficult to find love <laughs> when you don't want to prove other people wrong. And it seems like you're just living in a world where everybody's arguing and fighting and having to be right. Uh, it's very difficult, you know, so I'm glad we found each other because now we get to be at peace with one another and we just respect, um, you know. I'm still allowed to pray every day and pray over my meals, and he's just allowed to munch on it like the apocalypse is going to come and this is the last bit of food because that boy just loves eating. <laughs> um, you know. So, yeah. It's just, you know, we just love and respect the other. And we disagree. And we agree on some things. But it's just that, that peace, it being okay to not have to prove the other wrong and prove ourselves right that keeps us together. To just, you know, choose love. And, you know, learn that and realize that some things are just not worth fighting over. They're really not worth it. You know, fighting and arguing is just your ego um, being fueled. And... I think it just causes more disconnection and more separation. And uh, it breaks love apart, to be honest. It breaks love and friendship. It breaks love and relationships. It breaks love and family. It breaks love for your fellow uh, human beings that are just, you know, they're complete strangers. But, you know, there's a certain love that you have for your fellow human beings. Um, and, you know, I think if we just rose above that ego and decided to just love and accept and see the good in everybody and all that they had to offer. Uh, I think it would keep us better connected, not just as a nation, but, you know, maybe even cause, uh, create better allies and connections with other people across the world. Um, just to be able to accept and love um, and as I said in the beginning of the video, please, uh, when I say learning to accept others' opinions and beliefs and, uh, uh, different views, I, I do not mean not, I do not mean accepting when somebody's doing something wrong. I, I just mean plain, simple, different beliefs and opinions. That is all. Uh, if you see somebody doing something wrong, uh, please do not try to just be numb about it or be at peace about it. You know, I, um, I go, um, with the belief that often is quoted, you know, you probably seen this quote and they say it's quoted by Albert Einstein, uh, uh from Albert Einstein, excuse me. The world is a dangerous place, not because of those who do evil, but because of those who look on and do nothing. So, you know, if you see somebody just flat out doing something wrong, uh, no, I, I don't think that's a point in moment where there's you got to make peace with different opinion. I don't think that's a different opinion. That's a moment you, you have to rise above. That's the moment you, you have to get passionate. That's the moment you have to... Um, scream, yell if you want, shout even, if that's what you feel to do. Um, because then that is a moment that somebody feels they have no consequences for beating their child. They feel they have no consequences for raping another human being. Uh, whether it be a man raping a woman or a man, uh, a woman raping a man or anybody raping anybody, to be honest, uh, or somebody murdering somebody. Um, or someone molesting someone, whether that be a child or another adult, or sexually harassing. You know, these are things that you just know are wrong. Um, I think the majority of people just know that's wrong. Uh, so, you know, that's a moment where I I don't say be peaceful. Um, that is a moment, yes, you, you need to get passionate and you need to rise above and, and stand. Don't, don't let evil continue on. Uh, so please, when I say that, I, I wish people would be peaceful about their different opinions and, and agree to disagree peacefully. 
uh, you know, do not misunderstand or mistake that I, I think that those are different opinions. Those are not different opinions. Those are acts of evil. Um, everything else, though, I think is just it's a different opinion. If it's a political view, if it's a different religion, uh, or just different opinions, period. I, I, you know... I wish people would just learn it's okay to disagree and be peaceful with it. You, you don't have to prove the other person wrong. Uh, you, you can keep thinking they're wrong and can be peaceful about believing that. Uh, they can keep thinking you're wrong and also be p at peace with thinking you're wrong. <laughs> um, you know, I think that would keep us, you know, more united in love and connecting to our fellow human beings and, our family and, you know, have better, closer relationships and friendships, you know, just love, I think would help strengthen all that. Uh, but all the same, I don't think love stands aside when they see real true evil. So if you see something wrong, please let your passions fly. I will support you. <laughs> um, you do what you feel is best in that moment. Um, so, yeah, that's, uh, pretty much my thoughts and my opinion I, that I really wanted to share. Um, and I hope many people take it to heart. I really do. Uh, I'm sure not everywhere, but will, though, and they'll disagree with me. And that is perfectly fine, because, as I said, I'm perfectly at peace that you, you disagree with me. <laughs> I, I'm sure, even in disagreeing with peace, you, with just being okay with people disagreeing with you, I'm sure you have something good to offer, too. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, it shows you have a passion, and it shows you have a drive, and it shows you have strength to, you know, push things forward. Maybe in your way all the time, but it does show you have passion and drive to do so. So, as I said, everybody's got something good to offer. Each also has their own flaws, but, you know, we each have something good to offer. And uh, so it's so it's okay if you disagree with me. I, you know, I think you'll have your moment of flaws where it's going to be more against you than for you. Uh, but at the same time, I think you have got uh, good qualities by being so passionate. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's all I wanted to share. I'm at peace with people disagreeing, and uh, I hope. Many people take this to heart. Uh, but I'm at peace if you don't. <laughs> so everybody have a good day, a good afternoon, or a good evening. Uh, and goodbye now.